Yesterday, we brought you the story of Mark Frerichs, a 60-year-old American contractor from Lombard, Illinois, who was kidnapped and held in Afghanistan for 32 months. U.S. officials believe he was taken and held by the Taliban-allied Haqqani group. Mark was released in September of 2022, just before the new year. I went to meet Mark in his hometown for his first and only TV interview. Tonight, in part two, his captivity and his release. In the complete darkness of the tunnel, I didn't know. Um, I had no way of knowing how many weeks had gone by, how many day or night. Isolated in captivity, Mark clung desperately to the hope he would one day be freed. He didn't know his government was making a plan to get out of Afghanistan. In February of 2020, just weeks after Mark was taken, Ambassador Zalmay Khalilzad, the U.S. Special Representative for Afghanistan Reconciliation under then-President Donald Trump, signed a deal with Taliban leadership in Doha, Qatar. The deal laid out a timetable for full U.S. troop withdrawal by May of 2021. It did not include Mark's release. We're going to continue to work for the release of detained Americans, including Mark Ferrix. After taking office, President Biden pledged a September withdrawal. But by August, Taliban forces had reached Kabul and reclaimed it. What do you think at that moment when you realize they are now in control of the country? I'm frightened. Why? What about me? What about America first? Doesn't that include Americans first? How do you hang on to hope in a moment like that? What other choice do you have? You just hope tomorrow's the day. You know, looking back, I don't know how I made it through. Later in his captivity, Mark I mean, says his guards say would sometimes now, share news from the outside that. world, from a deadly virus spreading around the world to his sister working to free him. He believed you know, nothing. First thing I thought was this guy wouldn't be privy to that information. Because a week prior to that, he asked me if I had a sister. <laughs> but in fact, 7,000 miles away in Lombard, Mark's sister Charlene Sikora was doing everything she could to get her big brother out. This is, he got taken to coast and he started out in Kabul. Charlene went to Washington, lobbied the White House, gave national interviews to call attention to Mark's case. I cry every now and then <laughs> at night and and I just think about um, about what he's going through right now. Is he being bathed? Is he being fed? Is he clothed? I mean, is he warm? No one in the family has done more than you to lead the fight, to keep his name in the headlines, to talk to everyone you could talk to, to get him free. What was that like for you for the last couple of years? It was just. I just took each day and just did what I needed to do each day. She worked with the had, FBI and Justice Department, which put up a $5 million reward for information on Mark. Soon after, she says, the phone call started. Sunday, 9.53 a.m. Hello, can you help me this time, please? Uh, we are working for the release of Mr. Mark. Numbers from Afghanistan calling at all hours, claiming they could help to free Mark. Charlene documented everything. I have files and files and files of everything category, who I talk to each day and our conversations. And, and now I look back and it's like, wow, I really did a lot. Yeah, it was just each day for two and a half years. Today is 20. She tracked every November hostage video of her brother that made its way to her, four in all. I've been patiently waiting my release. While Charlene was fighting for her brother's release, Mark was fighting to stay alive and sane in captivity. I don't know, I tried keeping track mentally, but when, day, when one day merges into the other, it's difficult. And if sleeping is intermittent, sometimes it'd be like two hours and enough for a while, and then two hours, and sometimes I would sleep a, a complete night. But part of the harassment part of it was, was keeping your sleep broken up. He says the guards spent their time tormenting him, taunting him, beating him, and carrying out mock executions. They were having fun, like coming in the middle of the night, just young kids, faces all wrapped up like a mummy, kind of creepy, just all you see is two eyes, and coming in and tell me that they're gonna kill me. Chained up on the ground, blindfold me, and just kind of surround me like walking around me talking and cycling their weapons and everything. And I could feel, I could feel the barrel 
next to the next to my ear. Did you think ever this is the moment that I die? Oh yeah, I mean I I was ready to meet my maker. Just you know, I I was kinda like, oh, would they really do it? It's like, oh, you know, you look at their crazy eyes, and it's like, I think they would probably do it. <laughs> Meanwhile, back home, a breakthrough. The Biden administration makes a deal with the Taliban, trading Bashir Nurzai, a convicted Afghan drug lord held in a U.S. prison for 17 years, for Mark. In September, U.S. Special Envoy for Hostage Affairs Roger Carstens flew to Kabul to bring Mark home. What does he say to you? I think you're free now or something like that. I, you know, it was such a surreal moment. When you came back and you found out that your sister had been leading the efforts, to free you, fighting for you every day of those two and a half years. Yeah. What did you a, think? That was amazing. I couldn't believe it. Why not? I, had, I hadn't seen her in 15 years. She's halfway around the world. So I look at her in a whole different way now. You know, I mean, we're a lot closer. Dear Mark. Charlene has never before shared with Mark the letters she wrote to him while he was held hostage until today. We will have great tears of joy getting you home on U.S. soil. Mark's hometown welcomed him back with open arms. He's reconnected with childhood yeah, friends. It's been a long time, man. Gone out to while. restaurants and is back to practicing his magic skills. Oh, very nice. But he has a long way to go. You've only been back just over three months, yeah. right? How are you doing? Do good. Um, main thing is keep it, keeping it up physically. I seem to be doing okay. I'm in a relationship, so that's, that's working out good. A lot of support for people knowing what I've been through. And yeah, I, I'm having intermittent sleep issues. Sometimes um, I'll just have this, these feelings come across me of like, like impending danger, you know, but they pass. Yeah. He is starting Sorry, over yeah. in every way. No job, no home, hoping a GoFundMe will help sustain him. His savings and equipment were looted back in Afghanistan. After 32 months in captivity, he doesn't know what's next. But what he does know is he is free. Mark, your day-to-day -day life now, though, means you can move around freely. Yeah. You can open the door and walk outside. You can look up and see the blue sky above you. It is a world away from your life over the last two and a half years. Yeah. They took two and a half years of your life from you. Right. There's no anger there? If I harbor resentment or carry on continual feeling of anger, then they've won. Resentment for the past is a waste of spirit. If, if I don't let this thing go, it's gonna just keep festering and festering. I gotta just let it out, let it go.